Hare Krishna, dear devotees, on behalf of Iskana Atlanta and Srila Prabhupada, I would like to welcome all of you for this wonderful series on Putana Katha from Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm very sure that we all are relishing this Katha since last 16 days. Today we are entering the day 17. It's an amazing journey that we have traveled so far. Every verse, every word has been described so nectarianly by His Grace Amrinda Prabhu that we would like to listen to this and our heart goes towards reading Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And the instruction which is given in taking the shelter of the Lord's feet of the Lord, like yesterday we saw an example, that if we take shelter of the Lord, what happens? The Bhav Sagar will become like a you know, very small hoof print. It's a very small one. And we can easily cross over that. This wonderful Katha would not have been possible without you know, support of many devotees who are supporting me in this, you know, who are creating posters, helping me creating PPT, sharing verses, compiling all these things. So I would like to thank all of them. My gratitude to all the devotees who are supporting me in this. And uh, yes, of course, you know, we would like to thank all of you, all the devotees who are joining and giving us your association, your time every day. This is very, very encouraging. So without further ado, I would request His Grace Amrinda Prabhu to begin today's Katha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, Jai Kumar Prabhu. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripriye Vancha Kalpataru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Paditanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnapada, Ya Krishna Prishta, Ya Bhutale, Shri Mate, Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gaurvani Prasharani Nirvishesha Shunyava, the Paschati Deshatarani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shrivasa, the Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So let us chant the verses from Srimad Bhagavatam and then we will get into the discussion today. Canto 10, Chapter 6, The Killing of the Demon Putana Shri Shukha Uvacha Nandaha Pathivacha Shaurernam Risheti Vichintayan Harim Jagama Sharanam Utpatagama Shankitaha Kamse na prahita ghora, utana bala ghatini, shishum shachara nignanti pura gram of rajadishu, nayatra shravanadini rakshognani swakarmasu, kurvanti satva tamhartu, yatud hanyas chatrahi, sakhe chari eka dot patya putanan and the gokulam, yoshitva maya yatmanam pravishat kamacharini, tam kesha bandha vyatishakta malikam, brihan nitambas tanakritramadhyamam, Suvasa samkal pita karana bhushana twisho lasat kuntala manditana nam. Vulgusmita panga visarga vikshita irmano harantim vanitam brajoka sam. Amam satam hoja karena rupinim gopya shriam drash to mivaga tampatim. Bala grahastatra vichin vati shishun yadrichayananda grihe sadantakam. Balam pratichan nanijoru tejasam dadar shatal peg nimiva hitam hasi. Vibhudyatam bala kamarika graham chara charatma sanimi lite kranaha Anantam aro payadanka mantakam yathorugam suptama buddhira judihi Tam tikshna chittam ativama cheshtitam vikshantara kosha parichadasivat Varastriam tat prabhayachat harishite nirikshamane janani yatishtatam Tasminstanam dur jaraviriya mulbanam gorang kamada yashishor dadavatha Gardam karabhyam bhagavan prapid yatat Pranahi samam rosha saman vitopi bhat. 
सा मुंज मुंजालमी प्रभाषिणी निष्पीड्यमखिल जीव मर्मणि विवृत्त नेत्रे चरण भुज मुहु प्रस्न्न गात्रा क्षिपति रुरोद चरणो भुजावपी प्रसार्य गोष्ठे निज रूपमास्थिता वज्राहत वृत्त इवाप तृप पतमानोपी तेह स्त्री गव्यूता चूर्णयामास राजेन्द्र महदासी तदुत ईशा मतृग्रदम श्रास्यम गिरीकंदर नासीक गंडशैलस्तन रौद्रम प्रकीर्णारुणमूर्धज अंधकूपगभीराक्ष पुलिनारोह भीषण बद्ध सेतु भुज वंग्रीं शून्य तो यदोदर सतत्र सुस्म तद्वीक्ष्य गोपा गोप्यकलेवर पूर्व तो तस्वनीत भिन्नत्कमस्तका तरसी क्रीडंत अकु भय गोप्यस्तूर्ण सम्येत जग्रहूजात संभ्रमा यशोदारोहिणीभ्या समं बाल से सर्वत रक्षा विदधि सम्य गोपुच्छ्रमणाधि गोमूत्रेण स्नापय्वा पुनर्गोरज साभक रक्षा चक्रुश्च शक्रता द्वादशांगेशु नाम भी गोप्य संस्पृष्ट सलिला अंगेशु करोर्पृथक न्यस्यात्म अथ बाल से बीज न्यासमकुवत अव्यादो जौंग्रीमणिमा स्तव जान्वथोरु यज्ञोच्युत कटितट जटर हयास्यदुर ईश इनस्तु कंठम विष्णुर्भुज मुखमुरुक्रम ईश्वर कम चक्रग्रत सह जगदो हरिस्तु पश्चात्पाशनुरसी मधुहाज कोणेशु शंख उय उपर्युपेन्द्र स्ताक्ष क्षित हलदर पुरुष सामता इंद्रिया ऋषिकेश प्राण नारायण वत श्वेतद्वीपति मनो योगेशरो वत वृष्णिगर्भस्तु ते बुद्धि आत्मा भगवान् क्रीडंत पा गोविंद शयान पा माधव व्रजत अव्याद्वैकुंठ आसीन तम श्रीअपति भुंजान यज्ञुक्पा सर्वग्रह भयंकर डाकिो या तो धान्य कुष्मांडयेर्भक्रह भूत प्रेत पिशाशाश्च यक्ष रक्षो विनायका कोटरा रेवती ज्येष्ठा पूतना मतृकादय उन्मादा ये अपस्मारा देह प्राणेन्द्रियद्रुह स्वप्न दृष्टा महोत्ता वृद्धा बालग्रहश्च ये सर्वे नश्यंत ते विष्णुर्नामग्रहण भीरव श्रीशुख उवाच इति प्रणय बद्धाभीर्गोपीभीर्कृतरक्षण पाययिवास्तन माता संवेश यदात्मज तवद नंदाद गोपा मथुराया व्रज गता विलोक्यपूतना देहम बभूवोरति विस्मिता नून बतर्षी संजा योगेशो वास सृष्टो उत्पा यदाकुंधु कलेवर परशु चिवा तत्ते व्रज कस दूरे क्षिप्ता वयवशो न्यदहन काष्ठवेष्टित दह्यम से देहस्य धूमश्चा गुरसौरभ उत्थित कृष्ण निर्भुक्त सपद्यात सपदी आहत पापमन पूतना लोकबालग्नीक्षसी रुधिराशना जिगांशया हरए स्तन दत्वापति किं पुन श्रद्धया भक्त कृष्णा परमात्मने यछन प्रियतम किं नूर्रक्तास्तन्मातरो यथा पद्भ्या भक्तरिधिस्थाभ्या वंद्याभ्यालोकवंद अंगं यक्रम्य भगवान्नी तत्स्तन या तो धन्य सा स्वर्गम अवाप जननी गति कृष्ण भुक्तस्तन शीरा कि मुगा वो नु मतर पयांसी यासमी बुत्र स्नेहस्तुताल भगवान्वकी पुत्र कैवल्याल प्रद तासमत कृष्णे कुर्वतीना सुते क्षण न पुनर्कते राजन संसारो ज्ञान संभव कटधूम से सौरभ्यम अवघ्रा अवघ्राय व्रज कस किमीद कुत एवेती वदंतो व्रजमा 
ते तत्र वर्णित गोपै पूतनागमना श्रुवा तधन स्वस्ति शिशोर्चासन सुविस्मता नंदस्वपुत्र प्रत्या प्रेत्यागत मुदारधी मूर्धन्युपाग्राह्य परमा मुदम लेबे कुरुद्व यूतना मोक्ष कृष्ण सैर्भकमुत शृणुया श्रद्धया मर्त्यो गोविंदे लभते रतिम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण इट्स वेरी प्यूरिफाइंग टू चैंट द verses of shrimad bhagavatam especially a whole chapter in the association of vaishnavas is very purifying um akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udaradhi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param whether we chant with feeling or without feeling or with pronunciation or without pronunciation or with meaning or without meaning or with intention or without intention whether full of material desires or free from material desires if we engage and jump our whole consciousness into the fire of bhakti and we engage all our proclivity either we burn in the fire of bhakti or we drown in the ocean of joy in the proce- process of bhakti uh, krishna is ready waiting with open arms for all of us from the point of being insects and trees and reptiles and animals and birds all of us have evolved 99 steps on the game of snakes and ladder and now we just have one more step to go before we reach back home back to god it to goloka brindavan and the step of complete surrender to jump from 99 to 100 only trusting krishna giving our heart only to shri shri radha sham sundar nobody else that is the sum and substance of our human life so welcome everyone on our daily study of shrimad bhagavatam we have completed up to i believe text 9 today we will uh, try to do text 10 and at least 11 because we want uh, putana to go far away from krishna and not leave krishna hanging with putana um, overnight so yes we will start with verse uh, 10 tasmin stanam durjara viryam ulbanam ghoranka madaya shishor dadavatha gaadham karabhyam bhagavan prapidyat प्राणय समम रोष समन्वितो पिबत सो दिस इज द वर्स लाइक टू रीड प्रभु पाद्स परपोर्ट टू दिस वर्स जस्ट गिव मी अ मिनट सो दिस इज कैंटो 10 चैप्टर 6 टेक्स्ट 10 ओके शिला प्रभु पाद राइट्स इन द परपोर्ट Lord Krishna was not angry at Putana for his own sake rather he was angry because the rakshasi had killed so many small children in Brajabhumi in the past therefore he decided that she should be punished by having to forfeit her life which means give up her life so let us see what's happening in this verse so we'll first uh, go through the words of this um, verse and then we will see what our acharyas have written in this regard our acharyas have poured out commentaries for this verse because this is the life changer where putana starts giving her milk to krishna and krishna drinks up more than her milk <laughs> this is the verse in the chapter which is changing the whole context so let's see the words first so tasmin tasmin means uh, you could say in the spot of her chest hmm? stanam her chest how was the chest smeared durjara viryam ulbanam it was poisonous it was filled with poison so putana had poison in the heart and putana had poison on her body also so tasmin stanam or um, on her on her form on her chest durjara viryamul banam there was a very terrible poison we'll talk about the the quality of that poison also in some time but let's at least understand the words in the verse so 
she had smeared very terrible poison on her chest. And um, what did she do to Krishna? Ghora, again, the word Ghora has come here. Shukdev Goswami used this Kamsena Prahita Ghora in the second verse. Now he uses the word Ghora again for Putana in the 10th verse. Ghora, what did she do? Ankam Adaya. She gave her lap. To whom? She show her. To the baby. So till now, please note, in the second line, Krishna is being referred to as Shishu, baby. In the third line, he is referred to as Bhagavan. Quite fascinating. In the same words, the same person is first referred to as Shishu and then referred to as Bhagavan in two lines. Because as the context changes, the words also change. You can see this in the appearance of Krishna also, that uh, it has been described uh, when Krishna appeared in the prison house. Tatascha shaurer bhagavat prachoditaha sutam samadaya sasutika grahat. When Krishna appears in the prison house in Mathura, um, he gives a lot of instruction in a four-handed form as Vishnu. And then later, in no time, he becomes a baby so that Vasudev Maharaj can carry him across. We know this pastime, right? So that Vasudev Maharaj can carry him in a basket across the Jamuna, uh, he becomes a small baby. So in that context, you can see the same flip Baby to Bhagavan, Bhagavan to baby, that context has been used. So, Tatascha Shaurer Bhagavat Prachoditaha. For Shauri, that is um, Shursen's son, Vasudev Maharaj, was Bhagavat Prachoditaha, was instructed by Bhagavan to take him across. But when Vasudev Maharaj actually went to pick up, whom did he pick up? Did he, did, does the verse say, Tatascha Shaurer Bhagavat Prachodita, Bhagavan Samadaya? Bhagavat Samadaya, did he pick up the Lord? No. Tatascha Shaurer Bhagavat Prachoditaha, Vasudev Maharaj was inspired and instructed by the Lord, but when he picked up Sutam Samadaya, he completely picked up his own baby, Sutam. So two things are mentioned here. First, the transformation of the form of the Lord. When the instruction was given, he was in a four-handed form. But when he was picked up, he was a baby wrapped up in his little cradle, little basket. That's one. The second thing that has been mentioned is from Vasudev Maharaj's side, when he received the instructions, he received like a servant receiving it from the Lord, from the master. But when he picked up, he picked up with his own hands. Samadai. Uh, he completely picked up the baby, making sure that the basket on which the baby was kept, Krishna was kept, is properly padded with a lot of cotton and a lot of cloth underneath. And he's properly covered so that he's not feeling cold. And while, while listening, he was listening like the Das. Jivera Swarupa Hoi Krishna Nitya Das. As the servant listening to the master. When he picked up the baby, he picked up like the father picked up the helpless child. So, Tatascha Shaurer Bhagavat Prachoditaha Sutam Samadaya Sasutikagraha. In that jail, the father picked up the baby after listening to the Lord as a servant. You see, Bhagavat Prachoditaha and Sutam Samadaya. The contrast in, in like two lines. And the same thing has come here. In the second line, it Ghoranka Madaya Shishor Dadhavatha. Shishu. Krishna has been called Shishu, which means a baby, helpless infant. And third line, Bhagavan. So there's going to be something that's happening. And you know, the form doesn't change. There the form changed. From four-handed Krishna came down to a two-handed baby. But here it doesn't happen that when Krishna is picked up by Putana, he's a baby, but then no time he becomes four-handed. It doesn't happen. So what's happening that we will see when we come to the third line. <laughs> so Tasmin Stanam Durjara Virya Mulbanam on the chest of Putana was this uh, very toxic poison with high intensity, unlimited potency. And Ghora, that Putana, what did she do? She show her to the child, Anka Madaya, she gave her lap. She gave her lap means Krishna was on her lap. Because in the previous verse we know, um, yes, verse number 8, Anantam Aropayad Anka Mantakam, she had kept Krishna on her lap. So Krishna is already on her lap. This is to be understood. So Ghora Ankam Adaya, having given her lap to play for the baby, Dadavat having given, now she was trying to, uh, like a mother, 
breastfeed the child. But at that time, what happened? Gadham karabhyam. Karena karabhyam karaihi. In Sanskrit, when you have to use the context of one hand, then the word will be karena by one hand. But when two hands are to be used, then it becomes karabhyam. <laughs> like uh, those who uh, may have studied in school, the Deva Vanamala table in Sanskrit, you can see Devena Deva Bhyam Devaihi. Hmm? So similarly, Karena Karabhyam, with his two hands, what did the Lord do? Gardham, very firmly, Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, Propedia, he gave her a lot of Pida. <laughs> so what has changed? In that previous verse, we said the Lord went from four-handed to two-handed. Therefore, the form changed. He instructed like the master, but slept on the uh, little basket like a child. But here what happened? In one line, he's Shishu. On the second line, he's Bhagavan. Oh, when he was to play on the lap of Putana, he was a baby. But now when he had to use his palms for liberating Putana, <laughs> Gardham Karabhyam, very firmly with his two palms, he held Putana. And how did he hold Putana? Like Bhagavan holds the living entity. So the word Bhagavan has many meanings here. We will come to that. So it is not the shape or the size which changed, but it is the strength which manifested. He, Krishna is Agni. Dadarsha talpe Agni mivahitam bhasi. Krishna is like fire covered by smoke or covered by ashes. Now what did Putana do? She cleared off all the ashes and put fire on her lap. And now this little uh, spark started becoming a forest fire in no doubt. So that Shishu went from Shishu to being Bhagavan as far as his strength is concerned. Hmm? Also as far as his compassion is concerned. The baby was not showing any compassion to Putana. But now when Putana picked up the baby, the compassionate heart of the Supreme Lord manifested. Prapidya, lot of pida. Hmm? Pida means pain. So giving her lot of pain, prapidya, prakrishta rupena pida, severe pain. Pra, uh, prefix has come here. Giving her lot of pain, embracing her tightly and drinking her milk. What did the Supreme Lord do? He didn't just drink the poison or the milk. Tat pranaihi samam. He drank even her life hair. Tat pranaihi samam. He drank even her life hair. And how did... He, so where is the word for drinking? Erpibat. He drank. Past tense. Erpibat. And how did he drink? Rosha samanvita. Samanvita means along with. And rosha means anger. So with lot of anger the Supreme Lord was drinking Putana's milk. <laughs> For other demons, you can see Krishna had developed so much strength. So he could whip Arishtasur like how a dhobi, a washerman washes clothes at a dhobi ghat. Of course, in the technology of uh, uh, washing machine and dryer and all that, these examples of the Bhagavatam, they, they become obsolete. But um, Anyone who has been fortunate <laughs> to see the age-old way of how uh, clothes are washed on a stone or on a rock. I have seen, in my childhood, I have seen clothes being washed uh, in the absence of uh, washing machine and, and, and dryer and whatnot. Um, I have seen with that bat. Have you seen the bat with which clothes are washed? <laughs> it's a very age-old Indian thing. It's probably a culture shock for someone else. Why would you beat up a cloth like that? <laughs> but those who um, come from a village background or who have seen rural uh, culture, you may know what I'm talking about. Whipping the wet cloth to a stone or whipping the wet cloth with a bat. So it's described by Shukadev Goswami and by our Gurujan, including my Guru Maharaj, that um, Arishtasur was whipped by Krishna like how a washerman would whip a wet cloth. <laughs> so all the demons had the fortune of facing Krishna's arms and legs and fully blossomed body. Whether it's Keshi. Keshi went through whole dental surgery actually. 
whole tooth extraction, the whole tooth was removed for Keshi. Krishna just punched with all his might and all his tooth came out. The wisdom tooth, the baby tooth, the permanent tooth, every tooth possible came out. Krishna liberated not just Keshi, but all, he even displaced and liberated all the conditioned tooth which were stuck on Keshi's. They were bound to Keshi's mouth for lifetimes. So Krishna even liberated the teeth. Vedanta. Vedaishta sarvayameva vedyo Vedanta krit vedaviteva chahum. Vedanta. He took the danta out, the teeth out of Keshi. <laughs> and uh, so for Dhenukasur also, Dhenukasur was just protecting the fruits till then. It's interesting. Dhenukasur could have never climbed up the tree and eaten those fruits. So he was just protecting the fruits, the tal fruits at tal one, and waiting for the fruits to naturally fall so that he can eat them. But Krishna and Balaram said, the fun is not in waiting for the fruits to fall. The fun is in climbing the tree and eating. But Dhenukasur said, but I don't know how to climb, my Lord. I am yours. You do whatever you want with me. Krishna said, no worries. Anyone who comes to me, I elevate them to the highest level of consciousness. So saying like this, Krishna and Balaram threw <laughs> Dhenukasur to the heights of the tree, just like they do to the living entities. The living entities are trying to protect their possession in this world. But when they run to Krishna, Krishna gives them the position higher than the possessions in such a way that Dhenukasur never wanted to come down. Eternally, he was sitting in that position. So Krishna gives eternal liberation and eternal elevation above the trees and fruits of this world. So I hope everyone's getting the metaphor there. But however, Putana came when Krishna was physically, if you see, he was only six days old. So Krishna gave whatever he could through his hands, through his feet and through his lips to Putana. So Rosha Samanvito, with a lot of anger, Rosha means anger. Krishna drank and squeezed Putana's life air with a lot of anger. So this is the general translation. I hope everyone's able to understand. Tasmin stanam durjara viri mulbanam with lot of poison on her breast. Ghora putana ankamada yashishor dadavatha. She gave her lap to the child. And what did Krishna do? He reciprocated. So first two lines talk about what putana gave. And next two lines talk about what Krishna gave. <laughs> So in the third and the fourth line, Gardham Karabhyam with very firm grip of her of his lotus palms, Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, he propedia, he gave her a lot of pain by embracing and squeezing her. And Tat Pranaihi Samam, uh, along with her life air, um, he drank the milk, Apibat. How did he drink? Rosha Samanvita with a lot of anger. So this is the general understanding. So now let's see what our Acharyas have written in this regard. So for the word Tasmin, um, the, the word Tasmin means there. There. Hmm? So three Acharyas have given three different <laughs> meanings to the word there. Srila Sridhar Swami in his Bhavartha Deepika commentary, he says Tasmin means Tasmin Stane. Or Tasmin Sthane, as far as the body is concerned. So where was Krishna? Krishna was on the chest of Putana. So there, where? The chest of Putana. The context is the body of Putana. Sridhar, Sridhar Swami writes, now here the word Tasmin, the location, refers to Putana's chest. However, um, Srila Jiva Goswami Padhi writes, where? In the house. In the presence of Yeshoda and Rohini. So, Tasmin Grihe. So, uh, Sridhar Swami writes Tasmin Stane on top of Putana's chest. Hmm? But Srila Jiva Goswami Pad writes uh, Tasmin Grihe in that home, in that place, uh, in front of Yeshoda, in front of Rohini, this is happening. Okay. And Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad says Tasmin here means. In that context of the flow of the pastime. Till now, <laughs> there was something else happening. But now in that context of the flow of the pastime. So, Sridhar Swami says, Tasmin means Tasmin Stane on the chest of Putana. Jiva Goswami says, Tasmin Sthane or Tasmin Grihe at that home of Krishna. And Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad says, uh, in that context <laughs> of the story. Hmm? Because the previous verse... Said, Tam Tikshna Chitta Mativama Cheshtitam. 
Nirikshamane Janani Yatishtatam. The mothers, Yashoda and Rohini, are standing like painted pictures. So Tasmin, now in that context, Srila Sanatan Goswami says, this verse continues. Okay? Now, Stanam Durjara Viryam Ulbanam. Stanam means the chest of Putana and Durjara Viryam Ulbanam has a very specific meaning. The word Viryam means poison. And there is a word before and there is a word after. Durjara and Ulbanam. What does that mean? Srila Sridhar Swami in his Bhavartha Deepika commentary, he says, this only shows how indigestible that poison was. There is one adjective, Durjara, before Virya, with a, before poison. And Ulbanam, an adjective has been used after. So you see, in the context of Kamsena Prahita Ghora Putana Bala Ghatini, we know Putana word before that was Ghora and after that was Bala Ghatini. And the word Putana was sandwiched between the two to show how horrifying Putana's character was, right? So when an adjective is put before and an adjective is put after the word, it only shows that the word is sandwiched from both sides uh, with the context of how terrible it is. Or how great it is. Like you can see tam tikshna chittam atha vama cheshtitam. That atha as kakakshi nyai goes with tikshna chittam also and vama cheshtitam also. That she was um, very sharp inside and externally acting very soft. Right? It goes in both contexts. So similarly here, the word viryam means poison. And before that there is durjara which means fierce and intense. And after that also there is Ulbanam. So Srila Sridhar Swami writes that this only shows how indigestible and how dangerous that poison was. That Shukdev Goswami is using an adjective before and an adjective after. <clears throat> Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad, he says this has been used to tell everyone that this poison was so dangerous that anybody who touches this poison will die just by touch. It doesn't have to wait uh, to go down the throat and go inside the body and then act in about 15 minutes. There are many poisons in this world and I don't want to mention because it's beyond the context and it's inappropriate because the audience are varied, variegated. Um, there are many poisons in this world which act at different times. There are those which act uh, slowly, slow poisoning, which acts in many months. Uh, let's say if the mercury content is higher in the body, um, many times you can see the Ayurvedic uh, medicines that come have some uh, metal filings uh, because of the place where it's made. You know, if someone is not very careful. And by having that, um, not immediately, but over weeks and months, you can see that the body becomes very frail because of uh, this kind of um, um, arsenic poisoning which may accidentally come. Uh, then there are those poisons which act in, a, in an hour or so. Then there are those which act in about 15 minutes. Um, I once saw one, one effect of poison. Uh, accidentally, one um, rat had eaten up one poison piece. Uh, I remember in my childhood, we were playing cricket somewhere. And uh, unfortunately... Um, in, in our compound wall somewhere, there was some poison that a rat had eaten up. And um, uh, I saw the rat go through the pangs of pain. And in about 10 minutes, it was dead. But, uh, you know, it was a chance for us to just give up our bat and ball and sit there next to the rat and chant Hare Krishna for those 10 minutes. Um, but, but the point is, there are poison in this world which has different uh, effect and then there is uh, cyanide which acts just on touch uh, there have been so many people who have uh, tried to take cyanide um, and give the world in written proof what is the taste of cyanide you know people have so much time and <laughs> craziness in the human form so one person he put po he put cyanide in his mouth and he wrote s and he died so you don't know whether it's sweet or it's sour or, uh, you know, it's salty or what it is. doesn't matter what it is. One thing is for sure that the holy name is very sweet. 
मधुरम मधुरेभ्योपि मंगलेभ्योपि मंगलम पावनम पावनेभ्योपि हरेर्नामैव केवलम एंड द होली नेम इज आल्सो द ग्रेटेस्ट पॉइजन बिकॉज़ इट डिस्ट्रॉयज मटेरियल एक्जिस्टेंस जस्ट बाय वन टच इट्स ग्रेटर देन साइनाइड साइनाइड डिस्ट्रॉयज वन बॉडी बट द होली नेम इज सच अ ग्रेट पॉइजन दैट इट कैन डिस्ट्रॉय मल्टीपल बॉडीज व्हिच मींस व्हाट रिपीटेड बर्थ एंड डेथ वी कैन टेक दैट इज आल्सो टेकन अवे so that's the only nectar that we want to take take shelter of but anyway in this context shila sanatan goswami pad says this poison that putana had put on her chest um just by touch anybody will die just by touch on the tongue so to mention that the adjectives durajaram and ulbanam has been used tasmin stanam durajara viryam ulbanam that on the chest of putana the poison that was used was horrifying horrifying nobody should even come in contact with that poison so the question could be how is it that putana is alive with all that poison on her chest oh she had mystic uh, blessings from durvasamuni she could change her form she could change her strength she could do so many things and at the same time because she had put that poison all her life and that's how she murdered babies all her life she had gotten used to that poison now on her body but any sane person who would come in contact with that poison uh, not on the tongue even by the touch the skin if that poison is somehow spilt even on the palm um it will burn the skin and it will kill the person and what to speak of babies and what to speak of on the pretext of giving them the mother's milk and murdering the baby who has no clue what a poison is in this world and what to speak of krishna who is our only ever well wishing friend that we have lifetime after lifetime even when our parents leave us even when our assets leave us dhanani bhuma pashavascha goshthe uh, it is described that when a person dies dhanani bhuma all the wealth remains underground or dhanani banke <laughs> all the wealth is left in the bank and pashavascha goshthe all the animals are in the shed or all the, all the vehicles are in the garage dhanani bhuma upashavascha goshte all our wealth are underground and all our vehicles are in the garage or all the wealth are in the um, bank and all the cars are in the garage and where does the wife come from come up to she comes only up to the door she is not even allowed in the crematorium because she can see her husband go husband's body go through the fire and where do the relatives come they come up to the cremator the crematorium the cremation ground where does the body come from up to the fire after that who goes with the soul only super soul only krishna everyone leaves behind by the sand of time wealth is left behind relatives are left behind parents are left behind spouses left behind vehicles are left behind our property is left behind even our body leaves us at the fire but it's only krishna who carries us who comes with us as super soul and imagine he who's there with us lifetime after lifetime including for putana putana is trying to murder that krishna who comes as a baby and as a pretext of being the mother it is as horrifying as it can get as horrifying <clears throat> another acharya writes that why one word has been put before the word poison and one word has been put after the word poison to show that you couldn't have had anything before eating this poison to counteract the effect like it's not that i can have some pill and then have this poison so the effect will not be there there is nothing that could have been had before taking this poison and there's nothing that could have had could have been had after taking this poison like accidentally this poison has been taken now let's let's put some other pill to counteract a pill couldn't have been taken before this poison and a pill couldn't have been taken after this poison to show this shukdev goswami says tasmin stanam durjaram viryam ulbanam nothing could have been had no tonic could have been had before this poison to counteract the effect and nothing could have been had after the poison to counteract the effect is everybody understanding i hope i am not going too fast uh, in the explanation of these words तस्मिन् स्तनम दुर्जर वीर्य मूलबणम घोरा ऑफ कोर्स पूतना अंकमादाय 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 मींस शी टुक 
Krishna on her lap. Sridhar Swami in his Bhavartha Deepika commentary, he writes, Anka Madaya Shri Krishna Madaya, that Putana with her own hands, she lifted Krishna and kept on her lap. That's what she did. Anka Madaya. Ghora Anka Madaya. Ghora Putana Anka Madaya. Shri Krishna Madaya. She took Krishna successfully on her lap. Srila Jiva Goswami Pad says, no, she did not take Krishna on her lap. And please note, when, there is no conflict between the Acharyas. They are all just adding different uh, rays of light. This verse, every verse of Srimad Bhagavatam is like a sun. And the Acharyas bring one ray coming out of that sun each. So with all those rays coming out, the whole sky of our heart is decorated by the colors of devotion coming from the rays of the commentary of the sun of the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> right? So Srila Jiva Goswami Pad says, Shri Krishnam Akrishya. The word Adaya here means it's not that Putana lifted Krishna and kept on the lap. What did she do? She attracted Krishna, which means she was snapping her fingers, playing with Krishna, and saying, Ao, ao, yaha, yaha, ajao, ajao. Dekho, aai hai. Hum aapko bohot blessings denge. Aap bohot jaldi raja ban jaoge. Ha, aapko hum dekho alingan karne aai hai. Ao, khelna hai aap, aapke saad. We want to play with you. Come, Krishna. And Krishna is so innocent. He's so sweet as a baby. Whoever calls Krishna, Krishna is ready to go. Yatra gayanti mad bhaktaha. Where devotees call tatra tishthami narada. But here Srila Jeeva Goswami Pad says that Putana did not lift Krishna and keep on her lap. She attracted Krishna's attention. Sri Krishnam Akrishya. Ghoranka Madaya means she gave her lap to Krishna because she attracted Krishna's attention. Like how people generally attract the attention of babies. Uh, so she attracted the attention and Krishna who is in the cradle, he was desiring to go to Putana. And being attracted to Putana's lap, Mother Yashoda may have lifted Krishna and said, Acha, you have to go to them. Acha, come on, come Come, I'll give you to your new mother. <laughs> like that. That's the meaning of Ghoranka Madaya. Shishur Dadavatha. Here, Dadavatha, Dadav, she gave. What did she give here? Shishur Dadavatha means Putana gave the poison-filled milk to the baby at this point. Dadav means Dayachati, to give, to bestow something. So after Tasmin Stanam Durjara Virya Mulbanam Goranka Madaya Shisho Dadau Atha. Here, at this context, after Krishna is on the lap, Putana, she gives her milk to Krishna. She gives her chest to Krishna, which is filled with poison. The word Atha means after that, what happened? Huh? After Shisho Dadau, after the Poison was given to Krishna. Atha, what happened after that? Gadham karabhyam. With his two hands, with his two palms. Kara means palm, right? Tava kara kamala vare nakham. O Nushingadev, look at how you dealt with Hiranyakashipu and Prahlad Maharaj. Tava, hey Nushingadev, your kara kamala. You gave the lotus of your palm. To whom? Prahlad Maharaj. Ashirvada. And what did you do? You gave the petals of your nails <laughs> to your, his father. Tava kara kamala vare nakham adbhuta shringam. That adbhut nakha, those nails, you gave whom? Dalita, Hiranyakashipu. You gave it to him for what? Tanu bringam. To rip his body to pieces. Keshava dhrita narahari rupa jaya jagadisha hare. To that Lord who appeared as Nrsimha, I offer my obeisances. That's the meaning. So there the word kara has come. So kara, with both his palms, gadham, we know the word gad, gad, even in Marathi, even in Hindi, uh, means thick, very firmly. Gad alingan means very tight embrace. When the mother embraces the baby, gad alingan, very tight embrace. So gadham, very tightly, karabhyam, with both his palms, the Supreme Lord Bhagavan Prapidya, he squeezed Putana of her life air and he gave her a lot of pain. So in this context, our Acharyas have written a few things. Srila Sridhar Swami, uh, he writes that why did Krishna do that? 
because as soon as Shishu Dado, as soon as Putana gave her breast milk to Krishna, Krishna tasted and immediately he spat. What is this bitter medicine? What have you put? What kind of milk is this? This is not how Mother Yashoda's milk tastes. So immediately Krishna in disgust, his face went in disgust as if it was a bitter medicine. And <laughs> he wanted to give Putana the taste of her own medicine. So he kind of squeezed and held her very tightly. What is this you're giving me? <laughs> yad karoshi, yad ashnasi, you took it to a different level only. Krishna said, whatever you want to give, you give. Putana is giving literally whatever she wants to give. Krishna says, tat kurushva madarpanam, not like this. What kind of unscrupulous commentary is that? You're not reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, you Putana. And Krishna <laughs> kind of, you know, that's not what Sridhar Swami says. That this rascal is adding. <laughs> but um, Sridhar Swami writes that it, Krishna tasted this like a bitter medicine and he held Putana very tightly. Guard him. Now Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, why did Krishna hold Putana so tightly? Why did he squeeze and touch Putana's body so tightly? Uh -huh. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, Krishna was thinking, maybe Putana will realize that this is God and she will run away. And if she runs away, she will not be purified. She has come up to 99 steps towards me. Now I don't want her to run away. I don't want her to leave me and run away. Therefore, Krishna held her tightly. Agar tu mujhe chhodna chahe to bhi main tujhe nahi chhodunga. Even if you want to leave me, O Putana, I will not let you go. Thinking like this, Krishna held Putana, Gardham Karabhyam with his palms. If someone comes even with ill intentions to Krishna, Krishna holds his hand to such an extent, Gardham Karabhyam, that the living entity, even if he desires, he will never be able to let go of Krishna. <laughs> Gardham Karabhyam. Chakravarti Pad writes that. Uh, just so that Putana gets completely purified, she gets completely uplifted and not that she runs away back to Mathura telling Kamsa like how Surpanaka did. Little surgery was performed, she ran away. If she would have stood there, she would have gotten liberated, she would have got the service of Sri Ramachandra's lotus feet faster. But what did she do? In the middle of the surgery, only she ran away. <laughs> you know, it is like saying one time there was a there was a patient in the operating theater and he was sleeping and uh, the doctor was about to operate on him. And uh, in the middle of the operation, uh, the patient ran away from the operating theater, ran away from the bed, went home. So all the, pa the, the family asked, is the operation complete? The patient said, no, I ran away in the middle only. So the, the family asked, why did you run in the middle? She said, uh, no, because the nurse started coming again and again and saying, don't worry, everything will be okay. Don't worry, everything will be okay. First time, Anna, don't worry, everything will be okay. So then the family said, that's how the nurse speak to the patient. The patient said, no, my problem was the nurse was not telling me. The nurse was telling the doctor. It was his first surgery. So in the middle of the surgery, the nurse was telling the doctor, don't worry, everything will be okay. Don't worry, everything will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the patient said being nervous I left and I came home so Krishna thought uh, this patient called Putana should not run away in the middle of the operation <laughs> so Krishna was telling Putana don't worry everything will be okay and Gardham Karabhyam Chakravarti Pad writes Krishna held as the doctor held the patient uh, Krishna held the, uh, the devotee Putana very tightly and um, and as he held her, Bhagavan Prapidya, the word Bhagavan has been used. Here the word Bhagavan has many meanings. As we all know, Parashara Muni in the Vishnu Puran has given a very beautiful definition of the word Bhagavan. Aishwaryasya Samagrasya Viryasya Yashacha Shriya. Mm, Samma Jnana Vidyanam. It is described that uh, Jnana Vairagya Yoshchaiva that the Lord who is full of these six opulences is Bhagavan. Bhaga means opulences. Van means he who possesses. So what are the six opulences that the Lord possesses? In full, um, he has complete wealth. There's nobody as uh, rich as the Supreme Lord. He is completely powerful. He is completely beautiful. He's completely famous. 
He's completely knowledgeable and completely renounced. So I'll repeat that again. Krishna is unparalleled as far as wealth is concerned. In the Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu, it is described that uh, Krishna was so rich that in Dwarka as the king, Krishna gave in charity 13,000 cows every single day in charity. And only when you thought, that's like amazing, 13,000 cows every day in charity. By the way, that's only from one palace. Krishna had 16,108 such palaces. So millions of cows were given in charity every single day. Now, someone will think, oh, maybe the old, you know, tired, worn out cows who are just about to die, Krishna was giving them in charity. No, these were cows who all had calves. And they were healthy and they were young. And all of them had gold-plated horns with bags full of gold coins. Their hoofs were made of gold. Even on their back, they had a very nice cloth with gold uh, and very nice decorations all over their body. Such cows, 16,000 of them, uh, palaces, and 13,000 cows from each palace. That's the count. Bhakti Rasamrut Sindhu Rup Goswami Pad gives that Krishna gave in charity every single day. So whenever we get proud of the charity that we have given, we should understand whom we are giving it to also. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna is kind enough to let us give whatever we are giving it's actually his only so that's the first Krishna is unparalleled in his wealth and also Lakshmi Sahasra Shata Sambrama Sevya Manam millions and millions of Lakshmis are serving his lotus feet people do Lakshmi Puja to get one gold coin as mercy from Lakshmi Devi and millions of such Lakshmi Devis are at the lotus feet of the Lord so that's how wealthy he is the second quality of the Lord he is unparalleled as far as beauty is concerned. Now, Krishna's beauty is such that even Vishnu gets attracted. Even Lakshmi Devi gets attracted. Krishna's beauty is such that even Krishna gets attracted. <laughs> Lakshmi Devi gives up Vaikuntha and does tapasya at Belvan in Vrindavan. You can see at Belvan, there is a Mahalakshmi temple where Lakshmi Devi is sitting and doing tapasya only with the desire to enter the Rasa Leela. Please note, Lakshmi Devi is completely chaste to her husband. She will not give up her husband with the desire to dance with another husband. So that proves that Krishna is none different from Vishnu. That's a classic proof. Because Lakshmi Devi herself is leaving Vaikuntha. She is not a Sati. She will not give up her husband to dance with someone else. Right? Human beings also in proper culture, they don't do that. What to speak of Lakshmi? So everywhere you can see Lakshmi standing like this. She is giving some blessings, you know. <laughs> Ashtalakshmi. But in Belvan is the only place where she has folded palms because she's doing tapasya and she's eating khichdi as austerity. Lakshmi Devi. So um, Krishna is so beautiful that even Lakshmi gets attracted. Even Krishna gets attracted looking at his own reflection. So Tri Jagan Manasakarshi. Rup Goswami Pad says, Asama Urdu Rupa Shri Visma Pita Characharam. Krishna's beauty is such that moving become non-moving and non-moving become moving looking at him. And then when he puts the flute to his lips, then to kya? Then what to speak? The heart, which is hard rock, gets melted and flows like the river of Jamuna. The heart becomes softer than butter, and then the butter thief can come and steal it away <laughs> by his beauty and by his flute sound. So that's the second quality of Bhagavan. He's most beautiful. Third quality of Bhagavan, uh, he is most strongest. There's no one as strong as Krishna. Krishna can lift the whole Govardhan hill, not just on the left hand, but on the little finger of the left hand. So when in this world there is a phrase, ye to mere bai hat ka khel hai. where is that phrase originating from? Oh, when Krishna lifted Govardhan, everyone said, oh, it's going to be so heavy. How are you doing this? Krishna said, oh, this is bai hat ka khel. This is the play of my left hand. I am actually a predominated right-hander. So my left uh, hand is very weak. But this is so light that I can lift, not with my left, but with the leftest part of my left, which is the little finger. <laughs> That's how strong Krishna is. As Varahadev, he can lift the whole earth on the top of his tusk. As Anantashesh, he can hold universes on top of his head. 
That's the strength of Krishna. And yet when he holds the footwear of Nanda Baba on his head, he's not able to hold the weight of the love that the footwear has, that he's moving and wobbling like a drunkard, a transcendental drunkard who's drunk by the intoxication of Prem, Nanda Maharaj's Prem. So that's the third quality of Bhagavan. The fourth quality of Bhagavan, he's unparalleled as far as fame is concerned. Everybody knows God. Everybody knows Krishna. Uh, he's very famous. One time, I was in UP and there was a fight between two uh, rickshaw drivers in Uttar Pradesh. And they were, uh, you know, they were giving gullies to each other. <laughs> Sanctified words. <laughs> they were calling each other names. So the third rickshaw fellow comes and he said, Are thoda sharam karo, Ram or Krishna ke bhoomi mein ho kar Ravan aur Kumbhakarana ki tarah lad rahe ho. <laughs> he said, you know, have some shame. This place is the birthplace of Krishna and Sri Ramachandra. And uh, both of you are fighting like this. It's not good. So I was kind of impressed that that rickshaw person, uh, he invoked the name of Rama and Krishna even in the middle of fight. So the point is, Krishna is so famous that when two rickshaw drivers are fighting, to stop that fight, Krishna's name is invoked. <laughs> and Sri Ramachandra, who doesn't know the name Sri Ram? So God is most famous. Most famous. Uh, <clears throat> when someone becomes famous in this world, they get a Madame Tussauds statue, wax statue in London. That's all. But Krishna is so famous. Imagine how many statues he has. In how many incarnations, how many vigraha are there? Srila Sridhar Swami in his commentary, he writes, Rama Krishna Adi Avataraihi. Of all the incarnations, Rama and Krishna are most prominent. And you can go around the whole of India, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, and from Jagannath Puri to Gujarat, you can see from the length and breadth of India, you can see how many Vishnu temples are there. And in that, you can see how many Ram and Krishna temples are there. It's mind-boggling. So he's the most famous, Krishna. The Supreme Lord is most famous. And the fifth, he's most knowledgeable. Who can speak Bhagavad Gita in 40 minutes? Even if you learn from the best teachers, to recite them, it takes a few hours at least. In the, during the Mokshada Ekadashi Gita Marathon, uh, Gita Jayanti day, in every temple we chant the Bhagavad Gita. And by the time we come to Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, you know, like we are sweating and crying and uh, the throat is all completely dry and uh, hair is disheveled. And it's like uh, Mother Yashoda running behind Krishna. Flowers are all fallen. Hair is disheveled. <laughs> Body is filled with sweat. Uh, and even to read what is there in that book is a tough task. What to speak of speaking off memory. And Krishna was the origin for those verses. It's not that he prepared. It's not that Arjuna said, tomorrow I'll ask you these questions. You bring your notebook, okay? You write all the answers and come. And Krishna didn't recap before the first chapter. Uh, you know, chalo, these are the answers. Krishna didn't do that. It was just impromptu, on the spot. Arjuna is feeling uh, some material compassion and Krishna starts speaking. And it is such a great conversation that the greatest philosophers to prove their qualification, they have to first write a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavan Adi Shankar Acharya, Shri Pad Madhva Acharya, Shri Pad Ramanuja Acharya, Shri Pad Balbha Acharya. All the Acharyas have written their tika, their commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. Um, even Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Six Goswami, so much worshipped and um, um, referred to the Bhagavad Gita with so much honor and so much love. So that's the knowledge of Krishna. Another aspect of Krishna's knowledge is uh, <clears throat> on appearing in the prison house, he could tell his parents, Vasudev and Devaki's three past lives. Now you tell me which child is born in the hospital and starts telling the parents that, uh, you know, in last three lives you were uh, this Prishni Garbha, you know, Prishni and Sutapa, and you were this and that, and now you're Devaki and Vasudev, and just to fulfill your desire, I have appeared. If a child does that, that's a very big problem. Parents will be scared, not happy. And here the child is appearing uh, with his own, you know, dhoti, <laughs> he's coming with his own weapons. Children in this world are born naked, and that is smeared with stool and urine and blood. And if they're not crying, then that is a problem. They are made to cry and then everything is normal. They are, you know, they have no hair. 
But here is Krishna appearing in the prison house with locks of soft black hair, with effulgence, filling up four hands, you know, with his own ornaments, with his own dhoti, and giving knowledge of the past lives of parents. <laughs> Quite fascinating. Most knowledgeable. And the last sixth one is most renounced. Even after creating so many universes and possessing the whole creation, the Lord has given it out to all of us. To such an extent, people even doubt whether there is an owner to this whole creation, whether there is a creator. That's how renounced the Lord is. Imagine someone giving one flat, one home, one apartment for rent. And then he comes every month to collect the rent, right? Or through online banking, you can transfer. But if someone doesn't transfer money, then the owner of the house will come and give darshan, sakshat darshan <laughs> to those who are living there. It will never happen that he gives on rent and it's been like 35 years, he has never come and seen and the person even doubts whether or not there is a master to this apartment. Nobody thinks like that. Nobody, no owner will do like that. But Krishna, lifetime after lifetime, he has given so many universes to all of us to such an extent that he never interview, interferes or intervenes so much so that the atheist is convinced that God doesn't exist. That's how renounced the Lord is. So he's full of all these six opulences. Therefore, he's called Bhagavan. And in this pastime, at this point, you can see all the six opulences have been invoked. Therefore, the word Bhagavan has been used. How? Let's go in the same order. All wealth comes out because Putana, who had no wealth, Prema Dhana Bina Bhyartha Daridra Jeevan. Her, what was her life? What was her wealth? Just for the sake of some gold coins, she was walking around in an ugly form with poison all over her body, uh, duplicity, cheating others and murdering babies and eating their flesh and drinking their blood. This is what Putana was doing. And what did Krishna do to her? He made her his eternal mother. He gave her the wealth of mother Yashoda's heart. Nobody has ever given this charity to Putana. The best thing that ever was given, the best wealth that was ever given to Putana was at this point when Krishna tightly hugged her and said, you belong to me. Don't go anywhere. How is it that you have made your heart so dirty, Putana? Itna ganda kyo kar di apne ko? Isn't the heart the sitting place for me? Why have you made your heart, your body, your words, your expressions so dirty and so poisonous? I am the supreme Amrit. Why don't you accept me? And he held Putana and accepted with complete possession. And one gave her the wealth of Prem, of motherly love. You want to be mother? Why are you faking it? I will give it to you. You can actually become my mother. And he gave that wealth. Second, he gave Putana beauty. Putana was walking around with so much fake beauty and fake makeup. And now you will see in the next few verses how her original form comes out and it's ghastly. But by giving her the eternal motherly position, Krishna gave her a form where she does not have to transform to anything else and fake. And that form never goes through any deterioration or old age. Eternal, sweet, spiritual, transcendental form was given. So Krishna gave her wealth of love in the heart. So internal beauty was given through motherly love. External beauty was given through the position of being mother. The third thing that we mentioned is eternal fame. Eternal fame. So much so that Brahmaji, you can see. Um, let me screen share and show you a very interesting verse um, in the prayers of Lord Brahma. Let me know if you are able to see the screen share. Everyone able to see? So you can see here in the 10th canto, uh, 14th chapter, Brahmaji in verse number um, Look at what uh, look at what Brahmaji is saying here. He says, "My Lord, here Brahmaji, this is, you can note down the reference. Brahmaji, while speaking to Krishna, Putana became so famous that even Brahmalok newspaper was publishing Putana's liberation. And Brahmaji in his Tuti, Canto 10, Chapter 14, he says, Oh Krishna, you are so sweet in your heart. What did Putana have? 
Sadvesh. She only had good clothes, devotional clothes. Her body was not devotional. Her heart was not devotional. Her intention was not devotional. Sadveshad, Eva. Bas, keval kapde achhe the. And for that, Krishna, what did you do? Not just putana. You uplifted Sakula. You uplifted her, her two brothers also, Agasur and Bakasur. You had so much mercy on Putana just for the sake that her clothes reminded you of Mother Yashoda. You uplifted Putana and her whole family. My Lord, Twameva Deva Pita. My Lord, you gave this whole thing. So here, Brahmaji is saying, you have already arranged to give yourself to Putana and her family members in exchange for her disguising herself as a devotee. Brahmaji is saying, there is another context where the word Putana has come. Pankha vishikta sakala vayabam vilokya damodaram vadati kopa vashad yashoda tuam sukarosi gata janmani putanare ityukta sasmita mukho vatuno murari. When Krishna is decorated so nicely by Mother Yashoda with so many natural cosmetics, Chandan and the paste of so many fruits and flowers Mother Yashoda puts as gopa dots for Krishna and so many flowers. Krishna goes in the middle of the forest, picks all of that out and mixes only cow dung and cow urine all over his body. <laughs> he completely mixes that. And when he comes home, he is like a complete ball of brajraj. <laughs> So Mother Yashoda says, who is this? Krishna has his eyes closed so she can recognize. She asks, who is this? So Krishna opens his eyes and the blinking of the petal-like eyes, eyelids of Shamsandar, she, Yashoda Nandan. Krishna says, it's me. Mother Yashoda said, who are you? Krishna said, it's me, your son. So Mother Yashoda says at that time, Pankha Bishikta Sakala Vayabam Vilokya, looking at Krishna's body filled with Pankha. Pankha means mud. And because the lotus comes from Panka, it has its janma from Panka. It's called Pankaja. That which appears takes janma from Panka, from mud. So Mother Yashoda says, Pankha Bhishikta. It, say, it seems like you have done Abhishek with Panka, with mud. Pankha Bhishikta Sakala Vayavam Vilokya Damodaram Vadati Kopa Vashad Yashoda. Yashoda with anger asked Dam Damodar, Tuam Sukarosi Gata Janmani Putanare. Were you a pig in your past life or killer of Putana? Putanare, Putana plus Ari, Ari means enemy, is the name of Krishna. Putanari. And when you call Putanari, you say, hey Putanare. Right? So, Tvam Sukaro si Gata Janmani. Sukar the kya pichle janmo mein? Because what you do in your past life, the samskars carry forward even in this life. So, maybe you were a Sukar, you were a uh, wild boar or a pig in your past life. That you were jumping into drain and covering your body with dirt and dust. Maybe that samskar is carrying forward in this life also. That's what Mother Yashoda wanted to say. But Krishna is thinking, oh, my mother knows me from my past life. I was Varahadev. I was a wild boar. So when Mother Yashoda says, Tom Sukaro si gata janvani, were you a pig in your past life? Krishna says, yes, Mother. I was Varahadev. Mother Yashoda says, he listens to these. Bedtime stories and then he starts superimposing himself in those stories. Ityukta, listening to this. Ityukta sasmita, mutha, sasmita mukha. Uh, avatu murari. May that murari protect us. Who listening to the words of Mother Yashoda, were you a pig in your past life? He smiled in acceptance that my mother has understood me. So there also you can see the Acharya. He calls Krishna Putanare. Putana got so much fame that even in the works of other Acharyas, you can see Putana's reference. <laughs> in this context, one Acharya writes, My Lord, you're such a thief. Putana came to give you milk. In fact, she came to give you poison. What did you steal from her? You stole her poison. You stole her milk. You stole her sins. You stole her going to hell. Her inclinations were stolen away. Her jo praraptha, jo inclinations, jo samskar the uske. Because of past life, whatever she had, character she had made that you stole. You even stole her rebirth. And finally, uh, her duplicity. 
and you gave her the eternal position whatever she acted 10 minutes imagine if somebody in a role acts like uh, a multi millionaire patch 10 minute 5 10 minutes in a drama role somebody is acting and one person in the audience is a multi millionaire he comes and gives a briefcase you want to be a billionaire you yeah, know but that was just drama i was getting paid for it no i saw you did a good job here is a briefcase of billion dollars that's what krishna did to putana putana was getting paid for her drama and she just came for a 10 minute role and krishna said you really want to become my mother i will accept you i will accept you this past time is very hope giving dear devotees if somebody can act for 10 minutes for some kamsa to get some money she is ready to come and murder krishna and krishna gives her eternal life of liberation kim uta shraddha yagranan then what to speak of devotees who give up sinful activities and live a life of sane krishna consciousness and chanting and remembering krishna with all their life with their, all their heart where is the doubt whether or not they will receive krishna's mercy so this past time should only give us hope and entry into krishna's heart how loving our master is how sweet krishna's heart is because you are what you eat krishna's always eating sweet so imagine how sweet his heart is <laughs> makhan misri ke niche kuch baat nahi karte rabdi peete rehte hain he only keeps drinking rabdi which is the sweet of brindavan so imagine what krishna's heart is like very soft hearted so we mentioned krishna gave out of the word bhagavan what are the opulences krishna gave putana one he gave her wealth of love in the heart second he gave her hmm, beauty externally in the eternal form third he gave her eternal fame the acharyas are writing that uh, krishna you stole so much away from putana hmm. so putana is so famous that other acharyas also glorifying krishna in the form of in the name of in the leela of putana so eternal fame fourth knowledge he gave putana all knowledge because putana's duplicity went away and she started realizing are baba this is bhagwan agar mujhe pata hota ki ye bhagwan hai main kabhi bhi nahi aati tumhare paas lala chhod de mujhe agar main janti ki tu bhagwan hai main kabhi nahi aati tere paas mujhe laga tu bachcha hai isliye main aa gayi hatya karne ke liye oh krishna if i knew that you were god i would have never come to you i promise i would have never come i just thought you were a little baby i came to murder you please leave me i am sorry i know you are god please leave me all knowledge came as soon as krishna touched by krishna's touch all knowledge comes you see in the past time of dhruva maharaj also dhruva maharaj did not know how to offer prayers he was faltering looking at vishnu and vishnu with his kaunshal touched dhruva and what happened yonta pravishya mama vacha mimam prasuptam sanjeeva yatya khila shakti dhara swadhamna anyam shahasta charana shravanatva gadin pranan namo bhagavate purushaya tubhyam dhruva maharaj says my lord as soon as you touched me with your kaunshal all transcendental knowledge came in my heart by the touch of the lord divya gyan hriday prakashita all transcendental wisdom comes similarly you can see prahlad maharaj when he looked at nashinga dev he was trembling in ecstasy and he didn't know what to say and it is described that nashinga dev touched with his lotus palm the head of pralad and all knowledge came immediately one second so similarly here by the touch of krishna's lips for krishna doesn't matter touching with the palm or touching with the lips doesn't matter <laughs> अंगानी यस्य सकलेंद्रिय वृत्तिमंती पश्यन्ति पान्ति कलयान्ति चिराम जगन्ति आनंद चिन्मय सदुज्वल विग्रहस्य गोविंदम आदि पुरुषम तमहं भजामि ऑल द सेंसेस ऑफ द लॉर्ड कैन डू एवरीथिंग बट कृष्णस ब्रज लीला इज सो स्पेशल नरवत लीला इज सो स्पेशल दैट ही कैन हियर फ्रॉम हिज नोस एंड ही कैन वॉक ऑन हिज आईज एंड ही कैन स्मेल थ्रू हिज टंग एंड एट द सेम टाइम ही कैन रिमेंबर एनीथिंग एंड एवरीथिंग थ्रू हिज इयर्स that's how krishna works he can do anything from anything however out of love for the brajbasis krishna agrees to hear only through his ear and smell only through his nose and taste only through his mouth and see only through his eyes this is the mercy aho bhagyam aho bhagyam nanda gopa prajau kasam yan mitram paramanandam purnam brahma sanatan so all glories all glories to the brajbasis <laughs> and all glories all glories to krishna 
that they met each other. <laughs> the Brajbasis are special because they befriended the Supreme Lord. And Krishna became glorious and he became very fortunate because he met with the Brajbasis who could give him the love that he's looking for. So Putana, she got um, love, so eternal wealth, got eternal beauty, got eternal fame, eternal knowledge. Now the fifth that she received was she became very strong. She became so strong. Exter now till now she was only externally strong. But now she was strong enough to say no more association of Kamsa. No more bad association. No more killing anybody. You see, external strength is not so great. Internal strength is more difficult. To fight someone and beat someone down in a boxing ring is not that great. But to tolerate karma, krodha, loba, moha, mad, matsarya and still sit in one place and chant Hare Krishna, that is more difficult. <laughs> that is the true strength. So till now, Putana could not control her anger. But after Krishna touched, uh, no more vague touched her. Etan vegan yo vishahi tadhira sarvam apimam prithivim sashishyat. Srila Rupa Goswami Padas said, by performing bhakti, one becomes internally strong. Therefore, you can see Advanced personalities are called Maharaj. Right? We call Maharaj by their name, His Holiness, and so and so Maharaj. Why Maharaj? Raja means king, right? Why Maharaj, great king? Oh, Raja is he who conquers the outside world. But Maharaj is he who conquers the inside world. <laughs> he has no desire for lust and anger and greed, completely controlled. He has conquered the, the palace, the kingdom of the heart. So Putana got the strength to conquer all her inner vice. She overcome all of that, went away from bad association and lived in Brindavan. And sixth, she renounced completely her past intentions and activities and became a nice devotee. Because Krishna as Bhagavan, the, the controller of six opulences, gave her these six opulences at this point and purified. Therefore, the word Bhagavan has come. <clears throat> and then Gadham Karabhyam Bhagavan Prapid Yatat Tat Pranai Samam Tat Pranai Samam Srila hmm? Jeeva Goswami Pad has written something very beautifully that Putana came to give Krishna poison. Krishna took poison, milk, and her life. Right? And he writes a very beautiful reason why Krishna uh, drank her life. Do we want to know why? Somebody could say, Bichari putana keval dood de ni hai. Tumne hatya kar di. You killed. You know, people can always have some of the other argument. <laughs> so, Srila Jeeva Goswami Pad says that Krishna thought at that time, when Krishna tasted the poison from Putana's chest, he said, oh, oh, her whole body is filled with poison, which means very soon she will die. Let me very quickly save her by mixing my life hair into her. And my life hair is eternal. So if I mix my life air into her, she will also become eternal and she will not die by the effect of this poison. Thinking like this, Srila Jeeva Goswami Pad writes, uh, he very quickly sucked the poison out, the milk out and sucked her life air so that her life air mixes with his. And because he eternally lives, Putana can also eternally live without being killed by that poison. Thinking like this out of mercy for Putana, Krishna drank. Srila Jeeva Goswami Father writes. Did we all like this? An entry into Krishna's heart. How much compassion he has. And then, Rosha Saman Vito Apibat. Apibat. Then the question could be, did Krishna actually drink that milk? Because then the question could be, if Krishna can drink the milk of Putana, who was a cereal meat eater, then I also I can also eat meat and I can also offer to the deity. Then my deity will also accept. Because he accepted from Putana then why he can't accept from me? Because generally we say that you should give up meat eating, you should become pure, only then when you offer will Krishna accept. So if somebody uh, listens to this verse, they say, wait a minute, Putana in her body has all the dead bodies and she's only drinking the blood of others and she's also giving milk and that too mixed with poison and that also Krishna is accepting. So why should I give up meat? When I offer milk, Krishna will accept now. Why? If he can accept for Putana, why not for me? I don't have to give up milk. I don't have to give up meat. So this, uh, um, this argument can be put. 
So Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his uh, Sarartha Darshini Tika, he says, actually Krishna did not drink. <laughs> <laughs> the word apibhat is translated in Sanskrit as a shoshayat, which means to dry up. Shoshan karna. To, um, there's a very beautiful verse. Tadaiva ramyam ruchiram navam navam. Tadaiva shashvat manaso mahotsavam. Tadaiva shokar nava shoshanam nranam. Yad uttama shloka yasho nugiyate. That Krishna katha dries up the ocean of suffering. When you hear about Krishna, it dries up the ocean. So there the word shosha has come. So the same root has been used here by Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. He translates the word apibat as a shoshayat to dry up. And he says, actually, Krishna did not drink Putana's milk because he doesn't accept anything that comes from an impure source. So what did he do? He dried up Putana's breast and her life air because it was all very impure. So just like a sun, think about it. When there is a muddy pool, impure water, dirty water, and you keep it under the sun, what happens? The sun evaporates all that water. But can we say that that water has been drunk by the sun? No. The sun is not drinking that impure water. What is the sun doing? Just drying up that muddy pool. To such an extent, three things happen. One, there is no more dirt there. No stink even of that dirty place. Second, nobody knows where it went. And third, it doesn't stick on the face of the sun. The sun remains as pure as ever. So those three things happened here. The sun called Krishna was drying up the muddy pool of Putana's poisonous life air. So he didn't drink. Three things happened. It evaporated. Ashoshayat. He dried it up to such an extent that Putana became completely clean. Second, nobody knew where that poison went and where that milk went. And third, Krishna remained untouched like the sun. So Chakravarti Pad has given this to say that Krishna did not drink. Krishna drinks when it is Ashnami. The word Ashnami has come, which means I eat, I accept, I drink. So Chakravarti Pad says, Api, but she actually, uh, his, uh, her milk was not drunk by Krishna. It was just dried up. The milk, the poison, the life air, Krishna dried it up. And he was also making a show as if he's drinking. Why? Ye yathamam prapadhyante tam sthataiva bhajam yaham putana devi. You come and do your show and drama giri. Then I will also show my drama giri. <laughs> if you are a drama baj, I am also a drama baj. I am the root of all drama. Don't forget. I am Leela Bihari. I am Leela Purushottam. So if you can do your drama, that has its source in my drama. So putana tried to come with her drama, with her duplicity and hypocrisy. So Krishna acted as if he is also drinking, but it was show. <laughs> it was... No tanki, complete drama. <laughs> it's not true. Final point, the only word that we are yet to discuss is Rosha Samanvito, right? So Krishna drank with a lot of anger. So how do we understand this? Why did Krishna get angry? We know that anger is Rajogun. So Krishna drank her milk and accepted and evaporated her milk with a lot of anger, Rosha. Chakravarti Pad, right? Shila Vishwana Chakravarti. Uh, why did Krishna get angry? Kama Krishna Arpane Krodha Bhakta Dveshi Jane. Lobha Sadhu Sange Hari Katha. In, in the Prem Bhakti Chandrika of Shila Narutam Das Thakur, Shila Narutam Das Thakur has said where anger can be used. Kama Krishna Sevarpane Krodha Bhakta Dveshi Jane. Lobha Sadhu Sange Hari Katha. That you can get um, lusty. The lust can be used in begetting Krishna conscious children. That's the only place where lust can be used. So that a son or a daughter can appear in this world who can spread Krishna Katha and Krishna Kirtan. Then the proclivity of Dharma Viruddho, Dharma Viruddho Bhuteshu Kamosmi Bharatarishaba. Then union, sexual union can be used in Krishna's service, not otherwise. So then it is for procreation, not recreation. That is to be known. Second, Krodha. Where is Krodha to be used? Krodha Bhakta Dveshi Jane. If someone is troubling the devotees, then the anger can be used. So Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur has said, Putana has killed so many children in the past. And Krishna got angry at her that how many of them could have become devotees and come back home back to God it to me. 
you acted very foolish, you ghora. Why did you kill so many? That anger came not out of his. Because Putana is coming to poison Krishna. Krishna is trying to get angry. No. Krishna got angry because Putana killed so many children who could have become devotees. And eternally who are Krishna's devotees. That is why the anger came. Acha, Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur also writes one more thing. That actually Krishna did not get angry. Krishna's Dushta Samharika Shakti was invoked. Dushta Samharika Shakti means Krishna's energy which destroys the demons. That was invoked. And that energy came and destroyed Putana. Krishna was untouched. So Rosha here doesn't refer to Krishna's anger. It refers to that Shakti of Krishna which destroys demons. Hmm? So And the example has been given by Srila Vishwana Chakravarti. Just like if a man takes an axe and he cuts down a tree. Who is cutting down the tree? The axe? <laughs> Not the man. The man is just holding. The axe belongs to the man, but the axe is actually cutting the tree. So similarly, who cut down Putana? It was Krishna's Dushta Samharika Shakti. Krishna's energy, which is like the axe. And Krishna is like the man holding the axe. Krishna possesses the Shakti and it is the Shakti which uprooted Putana. Uh, so the anger here, Rosha, doesn't refer to Krishna. It refers to his Shakti, which that did the destruction. Sripad Hari Suriji in his Bhakti Rasayan commentary writes something fascinating here. He says <laughs> the word Rosha or anger is another name for Lord Shiva. Because Krishna closed his eyes and invoked Lord Shiva, that my Lord, O Lord Shiva, <laughs> I have come in this world to drink milk and you are expert in drinking poison. And because Krishna remembered Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva manifested in the body of Krishna at that point. And one of his name is Rosha, anger, because he's Rudra. He is the Lord of annihilation. So Krishna was acting as if he was drinking the milk and Lord Shiva was the one who was drinking the poison. So that Rosha Samanvita, Krishna drank with Rosh. Who is that Rosh? Another name for Lord Shiva. <laughs> so Lord Shiva came into the body of Krishna and he started drinking the poison. Yeah. Sripad Sanatan Goswami Pad writes, and this is the final point for this verse and for the day. Sripad Sanatan Goswami Pad writes that does it mean that Krishna was not merciful to Putana? Because where there is anger, there cannot be mercy. Na? Krishna's Bhakta Vatsalya Bhav Krishna's Karuna Sindhu Bhav, Deena Bandhu, Deena Dayal, Patita Pavan, these are all names of the Lord. So how can you say that Lord became angry? Uh, this has been explained by Srila Sanatan Goswami. So just like in the pastime of Krishna uplifting Kaliya, the Nagapatnis in their prayer, they say, Tava Vatara Khalanigrahaya Ripu Sutanam Apitulya Drishti. Right? My Lord, Tava Avatara, you appear in this world to destroy the demons. And you are so pure in your heart. Ripu Sutanam Apichatulya Drishti. If someone is a demon born in a demoniac family, but is your devotee, like Prahlad Maharaj, like Bali Maharaj, you give them eternal glory. And if someone is your own son, like Bhaumasur, and he becomes a demon, you kill him. That is how clean your heart is. Even your own son, if he becomes a demon, you kill him. But on the other hand, if a demon becomes your devotee, you accept. And why are they saying this? Because our husband, he's a demon. And he's not surrendering to you. Still, you're giving the lotus of your feet, the imprint of your feet on his head. Kasyanu bhavo syanadeva vidmahe tavangri renuhu sparashadhikara. What has our rascal husband Kaliya done? To get the dust of your lotus feet on the head. You are so unbiased, my Lord, that you have come in this world to destroy the demons. And our husband is a demon and he's not even surrendering. Still, you're giving mercy. It is perplexing. The Nagafatnis are saying. So this is the heart of the Lord. So how is it that he is getting angry? How is it that he's killing Putana? It is like this. You know, when there is the summer season, Alfonso mangoes are very popular, right? So when the basket of Ratnagiri Alfonso mangoes come, you know, in the family, all the cousins, the brothers, sisters, they all come home during summertime. And that's when the mangoes are there. And we don't want to share it with them. 
<laughs> because they come, they say, hey, do you have some mangoes? Uh, well, yeah, we do. And then they open up the whole thing and then plunder. And what remains is only peels for us. <laughs> That's all that remains. So therefore, <laughs> what we used to do is, let's say if you have a box full of mangoes and you know your cousins are coming, then on the top of the box, you just write, you know, Imli. You just put, <laughs> you put a sticker and you say Imli or you put ginger. You just say Neem. Because they're not going to open the box. They will think that mother has put these um, stickers. So they will just write Imli. No, this box is not. mangoes? They're not going to open up each of them. So seeing the upper layer, they are confused. But those who know that this is just a sticker, they will <laughs> unwrap and they will take the mango. So Krishna is like this. Externally, even when he punishes, it's like a box on the top saying Imli. But inside, he only has sweet mangoes of love for everyone. Externally, he kicked Kaliya on the head. That was like the Imli sticker. But what he gave Kaliya? Eternal life in his pastimes. That is the Alfonso mango inside. So Krishna's pastime should not be judged on the external sticker. Because many times Krishna can put ginger. Krishna can put Imli. Krishna can put Neem. He can write stickers like this. But when you open the box, you understand it's only Alfonso mangoes. So here also, Rosha, it seems as if there is anger. That's the sticker on the top. But inside the box of the pastime for Tutana, there is only the Alfonso mango of eternal life. So here, Krishna has uh, crushed Putana in so much pain. I will just read the next verse also. I will explain it tomorrow so that Putana and Krishna are not hanging together like this because what is going to happen at this point is Krishna has squeezed and, and accepted Putana's life and Putana is about to leave her body. But we haven't discussed that. So if you leave it till tomorrow, Mother Yashoda is watching this scene. And for 24 hours, because of our time constraint, we are putting Krishna's mother in pain. So we will just read the next verse, but the explanation, we will do it tomorrow. So the next verse, verse 11. Samuncha muncha lamiti prabhashini nishpi diamana khila jiva marmani vivritta netre charanau bhujo muhu praswin nagatra kshipati rurodaha. Prabhuji, can we screen share Shila Prabhupada's translation and purport to this verse? Uh, 10, 6, 11. So then we all can read. And then we will pause. Srila Prabhupada's translation and purport to Levin. Unbearable, unbearably pressed in every vital point, the demon Putana be began to cry, please leave me, leave me, suck my breast no longer, perspiring her eyes wide open and her arms and legs flailing. She cried very loudly again and again. And verse 12. We can see Tasya Swanena Tigabhira Ramhasa Sadrir Mahidya Ushachala Sagraha Rasadisha Chapratine Direjana Petu Kshita Vajrani Pata Shankaya. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. As Putana screamed loudly and forcefully, the earth with its mountains and outer space with its planets trembled. The lower planets and all directions vibrated and people fell down fearing that thunderbolts were falling upon them. 13. Nisha charitham vyatitastana vyasur vyadha yakesham charano bhujau api prasarya goshte nijarupa masthita vajra hato vritra ivapatanripa in this way, the demon Putana, very much aggrieved because her breast was being attacked by baby Krishna, lost her life. Good. Putana is gone. See, lost her life now. Everything is peaceful in Praja. Oh, King Parikshit, opening her mouth wide and spreading her arms, legs, hair, she fell down in the pasturing ground in her own original form as a Rakshasi, as Vrittrasud had fallen when killed by the thunderbolt of Indra. Gaur Prema Nande Hari Hari Bol Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Shashi Nandan Gaur Hari Ki Jai Rupanuga Gaudiya Parampara Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Srila Gurudev Ki Jai Nidai Gaur Prema Nande Hari Hari Bol Jai Jai Shri Radhe
Sham. Sri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. So Putana has been pronounced dead today in our Katha. <laughs> but tomorrow we will again go through uh, the 11, 12 and 13 with the commentaries of our Acharyas. So today we finished verse 10 where uh, through the commentaries of our Acharyas headed by Srila Prabhupada and some lessons that we can see in Krishna accepting the life air of Putana. We'll see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, dear Ramana Prabhu, for such an amazing, wonderful katha that you narrated today. I, I go to one particular verse because I saw two extreme. One is that when we are attached and, and the word that you quoted about Dharani, Bhumo, Pashavascha, Gostre, where everything is left, we are leaving behind everything. Still, the attachment is not going. This knowledge is there. And at the same time, you are saying that Krishna is so merciful that why are we not going there? He's so merciful. Give up everything and just take his shelter. Like, you know, Putana did and she was liberated. So many examples are there. So I see two extremes and, and then uh, we are somewhere in between. <laughs> we are not here. We are not there, you know, somewhere in between. I think we need to choose a path and say, okay, I want to choose Krishna and just go there, you know. Just forget about this Tanani, Bhuma, Pashavascha, Goshe, Bharya, Gruhadari, Janas, Mashane. So very beautifully you narrated. And all this different commentary, only increasing our Utkanta, our love for reading Srimad Bhagavatam, taking shelter of Krishna, and then making sure that we go to him. So thank you so much for guiding us. Thank so you. Dear, there was an exam. Oh, sorry. There was some homework yesterday. How many of you did it? Many have raised their hand. <laughs> yeah, you can raise your hand. And yeah, I did it too. Uh, I found like, you know, 13 names of Putana and about 8 names of Krishna. Maybe I don't know I'm right or wrong. <laughs> but that's how I found it. I'm sure you all relish. Because every word that, uh, you know, were there, I was writing translation against that word. You know, Balak Hadini, you know, all those things. And it was very nice. When we meditate on this, this how, how we get engaged. Yes, yes, yes. Really, it's very much enough. With this, we'll stop here. We'll see you all tomorrow, same time, same place. And look forward to have your association once again, dear devotees. Maybe there will be some homework. We never know tomorrow. So please come prepare. Let's pay our gratitude. Please get some the Prabhu. Thank you very much, dear Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Today was beautiful. Sir, so, so thank you for helping us choose Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been a long time now. Everybody's coming to India. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.